Hello. Hi, Catherine. How are you today? I'm doing really good. How are you? Good. I understand you have a new addition to your family. I do. I got a kitten, and I haven't had a kitten in decades. Right. So I'm really not sure of all the things I should be doing with her to make sure that she's healthy and that she uh, gets along with everybody in the household. So I brought her in today. Okay, great. Well, first of all, let me meet your kitten. And this is Agnes, I understand. Yes, this is little Agnes. Hi, sweetie. And is she behaving herself for you? So far, so good. She's only angered one of my other cats. Excellent, excellent. Good. All right, well, with, um, with new kittens that you're introducing to your house, um, today I'll do a good checkup on her and make sure she's all healthy for you. And uh, like our babies, when they're kittens, they need a series of vaccines to make sure we boost their immunity mm -hmm. so that they stay healthy for us. Now all cats, whether they're gonna be indoor cats or outdoor cats, um, need what's called core vaccines. And those will include the rabies vaccine and some vaccines against the upper respiratory tract infections and a virus called panleukopenia. These diseases are um, the most severe if they get them and they're the most common. So we like to give them to all cats and kittens. So does she need that even if she's not gonna be outside? Yeah, she okay. definitely does, okay? So she'll get a series of them. We like to give them at eight, 12, and 16 weeks. Um, but if she's, I understand she's like 14 weeks yes. now, which is fine, we'll get her back on track. Okay. That's fine, she'll get the series of three. And um, if her lifestyle changes, that she's gonna be an outdoor cat one day, there's lots of other vaccines we can discuss. We like to tailor it to each individual cat and their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So you might be familiar with the feline leukemia vaccine, but right now if Agnes is gonna be an indoor cat, it's really not something she needs, okay? okay? okay. Another thing we like to um, discuss with uh, new kitten owners, I know it's been a while, as you said, <laughs> yeah. Um, is uh, deworming programs. Okay. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but kittens pick up intestinal parasites, worms, from their moms. And so what we like to do is give them a series of dewormings, and that can be in a pill or a liquid, depending on what Agnes' um, personality is going to be for getting medication. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also some topical um, preparations we could use too if she really hates getting anything in mm -hmm. her mouth. So we deworm them quite frequently as they're kittens, because that's the most susceptible life stage for the intestinal parasites, and then we back off as they as they get older because they're not as susceptible to picking them up. But we still keep them on a regular deworming program. Okay. okay. Did you have any other questions for me right now? Well, what about their food? Good question. Um, as you know, um, for us too, it's very important that we have a healthy diet to keep us healthy. So we want our kittens on a really good, high quality kitten food for their first year of life. Um, it's a good idea to get them used to both a dry formulation and a little bit of canned. I know the dry is much more easy to, to deal with, mm -hmm. but we like to have cats and kittens get used to eating a little bit of wet food as well. It adds some moisture to their, to their daily diet. Um, as, as well, with some diseases that she potentially could get as an older cat, sometimes the foods they need to be on are only found in a canned form. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to introduce a new formulation of food to an older cat that's already not feeling too good. But if they're used to eating both canned and dry, we have lots of latitude for special diets if need be. Good, um, any other questions you can think of not, right now? Not right now. Okay, I know Agnes is still a bit young, she's 14 weeks, but a lot of people um, uh, like to start talking about getting them spayed. Okay. okay, okay. We usually like to wait till they're about six months of age um, before they go into their first heat. So we'll book Agnes in to have her surgery done done then. Okay. okay? That so that'll good. require an overnight stay. She'll have a few stitches when she gets home. Um, but once she's had her surgery and you're taking her home, we'll go over all what you need to do post okay. post operatively for her care at home. But okay. uh, it's definitely a good idea to get her spayed at around the six month um, age mark, um, just before she goes into her first heat. Okay. Okay. Good. good. Well, should we take a look at Agnes now? Yes. <laughs> Come on, sweetie. Come on out. There we go. What a cute cat. Okay. All right, come up and see your mom. Come on. All right, Catherine, if you can give me a hand with this. Yeah. All right. So for my physical exams, I like to go from nose to tail, basically. All right. So we're going to look in these ears of yours. 
Good job. So I'm looking for any signs of any infection or ear mites. And her ears look nice and clear. Okay. And look at those beautiful eyes. You always want to check to see if her eyes are having any discharges or if they look red to you or anything like that. That could be a sign of infection. And then we need to see her. And her nose looks nice and clear. And let's have a good look in your mouth, sweetie. Look at those beautiful teeth. Needle teeth. Yes. Now, I know we went over a lot of information already today, Catherine. What we're going to do is on our next visit with Agnes, we'll start talking about things like dental care, okay. teeth care okay. at home, um, maybe some grooming, some behavior issues like that. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I'm just feeling her lymph nodes um, and her throat area, and that all feels good. And let's feel down your legs and look at those pretty paws. Now, are you used to trimming everybody's nails at home? Yes. Well, that's a funny thing. She actually cried like, wee. You'd think I was hurting her as I take the eighth of an inch off. Right. Um, yeah, some cats can be quite the drama queens, and I think that's probably what Agnes is doing. Because you know yourself, when you just trim a little bit of nail off, it doesn't yeah. hurt at all. I think she's just um, trying to pull your leg. Okay. But yeah, I can see you're doing a good job at keeping those nails, um, those nails trimmed up. You try to do that. Yeah. Now I'm going to listen to her heart and lungs. That sounds great. And next we're going to feel her tummy area. Come on, sweetie. Good girl. I'm basically just feeling to make sure everything is where it should be and that I'm not feeling anything that shouldn't be there and making sure she doesn't have any pain. And that all checks out. And now I'm just going to feel down her back legs. And she's got another pair of lymph nodes sort of behind her kneecaps, which mm -hmm. I'm checking. And they don't like this part, but it's always a good idea to have a little peek under the tail. Good. Now, the last thing I'm going to look through is all her beautiful fur. Well, she's purring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she doesn't seem to mind this at all. Okay, Agnes. Good. Now, can I look at your belly? What I'm doing here is I'm just feeling for any umbilical hernias, mm -hmm. which I don't feel any at all, because if there was one there, we um, would repair it when she was being spayed. Good girl. All right. Good, Agnes. You check out.